Thank you. So, Bishop, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this interview. Uh, we're delighted to have you uh, with us. So, just going to ask some questions about creation and harvest as we celebrate our harvest service today. Um, so, first of all, uh, when and how did you get interested in issues to do with caring for creation? I think I first became aware in the 1960s and early 1970s. So I was a teenager uh, in those years. So thinking about life, the universe and everything as you do in your teenage years in particular. And it was the time, of course, of the uh, moon landing. So there was tremendous excitement, also real awareness in a new way about planet Earth. So I think I, I was first uh, sensitized, if you like, to these issues all that long time ago. And since then, my, my concern and interest has really only grown. If you could briefly describe to someone who didn't know what the issues we're facing today were, what would you say? Well, I think one of the things the pandemic has done for us is make everyone uh, much more aware of some of the uh, deeper, longer lasting issues, which have been around for a long time, we know, such as the environment um, crisis. Uh, but it's made us much, much more aware of how significant these things are, and also how interconnected they are, thoroughly interconnected with our economic systems, the way we produce our food, the way we use the land, um, our energy supplies, the way we heat our houses, uh, all of those things are interconnected. And I also think that they are thoroughly interconnected with what's again has come into uh, very sharp focus, um, the importance of um, racial justice and how very often particular issues uh, hit people disproportionately and there are very deep rooted long running problems which we need to address and all of these things working together are about producing a fairer world, a more just world and a more sustainable world and that's at the heart of our Christian understanding that Christ came that we may have life in all its fullness and that's fullness of life for everybody, every person on the planet, wherever you may be, but also for all God's creation. So I think behind all those things, which are all the headline things around at the moment, I would say there's also a real spiritual challenge, because again, our under Christian understanding is that um, humankind, we are created by love and for love, in order to live in a way where we live in good relationship uh, with God, with each other and with the planet. And if those relationships go wonky, then we are in deep trouble. And it's about, if you like, one of the ways of looking at it, it's about restoring good relationships. Thank, thank you, Bishop. Uh, how do you respond to the arguments which are somewhat skeptical about climate change? Uh, what would you say to that? Well, first of all, um, I have a background uh, in physics, it's not specifically in environmental science, but it seems to me that the science uh, is, is overwhelmingly uh, telling us there are really serious issues that we need to address. And although science, it does move, it does develop in the light of evidence, but the evidence is all going in one direction and has been for a long time. And although you can find one or two dissenting voices, if you look hard enough, the vast but overwhelming majority uh, of the scientific community know that there's something very serious going on that we need to address. And it, the evidence is in front of our eyes. Even if you don't think you've got a scientific bone in your body, if you turn on the television, you will see increasing numbers of serious wildfires, such as those going on in California at the moment, uh, serious drought situations, um, unusual degrees of flooding and the melting of the ice caps. All of these things are going on now and they're real. 
And also, if you listen to voices from those in different parts of the world to the UK, and one of the things which, uh, in preparation for the um, Anglican Communion's Lambeth Conference of Bishops, which has now been postponed to 2022 because of the pandemic, but part of the preparation for that was hearing from different parts of the Anglican Communion how they were being affected by climate change. And there are some very serious stories. If we listen to those voices, lives are being affected now. And it's really important that we uh, take this very, very seriously. Uh, why do you think this is something that Christians and churches should make a priority? Well, the fifth mark of mission is, is a hugely important part of our care for all God's creation. At the deepest level, the gospel is good news for all of God's creation. And there are verses in the New Testament which talk, talk about all things being reconciled in Christ. In Revelation, we speak about a new creation. So it's not just about human beings, important as uh, they are, it's about all of God's creation. And what sort of things uh, would you like to see churches do? One is to sign up as an eco-church. And the reason for that is that the eco-church uh, framework enables uh, each individual church to think through very systematically what are all the things that we need to do to ensure that we've got a sustainable and fair and environmentally friendly setup. Mm. And it, it gives you a process to do it. So that's the that's the first thing. Absolutely get on there and get to the highest uh, level of that that you possibly can. I realise there are practical difficulties. It takes time, but get yourself on the journey because that's, that's hugely important. I think the second thing I'd say is make it a regular part of your worship and prayer. Um, build it into the way we worship shapes us. Um, it changes us how we see things. Build it into the regular worship and prayer. I think the third thing would be to say work with others, people of other faith communities, with the local council, uh, other charities who are doing a lot of work in this area. Uh, make those links and, and work with them. This is something we're all in this together. And that's uh, churches. Uh, how about individuals? Well, again, I think there's lots we can do. One of the dangers is that as individuals we think, um, oh, well, that's not going to make much difference in such an overwhelmingly big issue but of course it does make a difference it, it, we've got to have everybody um, making sure we're changing doing what we can to change our uh, lifestyles so some obvious examples are look at where your electricity and gas is coming from and try and shift it to the green suppliers if you possibly can uh, that's and there's plenty of those around now another thing is to look at the food that we eat and the pandemic has probably made us think very much harder about our food supply chains, where it comes from, how it's produced. And of course, one of the really big things which is constantly being said is that overall, we need to reduce our meat consumption and particularly beef because it becomes very inefficient. It's not massive changes, but there are significant changes which if everyone was making them, would make a big difference overall uh, to the planet. Looking about the way we move around the planet, our transport systems. And then of course, it's worth looking at clothing as well and where your clothing comes from and how that's being produced and pretty much everything we buy. Because I think one of the problems really for many, many years now is that we've been using things and not really counted the environmental cost in their production or their waste disposal. I would also say encourage each other mm. in this. We're in this together. Thank you, Bishop. And finally, we're thinking about this in the context of our harvest, harvest service, harvest celebration. Uh, have you got any kind of final thoughts in how this kind of fits in along with harvest? And One of the things the pandemic has done is make us much more aware of where all that food comes from the cost of it being produced, transported and so forth. And I think, and that's directly linked uh, to the climate change issues about the ability to produce food in that way, uh, particularly the mass production of animal farming. 
and the destruction of quite large areas of rainforest in order to produce certain crops. But I think the second big theme in Harvest is about justice and fairness and making sure everyone on the planet can have a fair share of the God-given resources. And again, the, the climate change issue is disproportionately affecting different people in different parts of the world and indeed um, in our own country. In the age in which we live, they're completely intertwined, the, the harvest and the, the environment. Bishop, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing. Um, it's really helpful and uh, really appreciated. So thank you very much.